Hey everybody and welcome back to It's Only Food with Chef John Polite. Today we're going to be showing you how to make portobellas with marsala sauce. Cue the music. All right, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. Glad to have you back. Today we are going to be showing you how to make portobellas with marsala sauce. So let's drop down and see what our ingredients are for this. We're going to start out with a quarter cup of all-purpose flour, two large eggs, a half a cup of panko breadcrumbs, a quarter cup of shredded Parmesan cheese, three portobello mushroom caps, six tablespoons of olive oil, two shallots, one teaspoon of thyme, a half a tablespoon of fresh minced garlic, a half a cup of chicken broth, a half a cup of marsala wine, a quarter cup of sour cream, I want that to be room temperature, and then of course a little bit of salt and pepper as we go through the whole process. Let's step over and start cooking. All right, well first thing we want to do is we want to get these shallots and these mushrooms cleaned up. So I am just going to cut up our shallots, and we're just going to cut our shallots this way, very thinly across the grain. Okay, there's our shallots. I'm going to put those in a bowl. Now with your portobello mushroom, you want to just take and kind of peel you see how you peel these edges and you can get the nice um, the skins off of it and you get that nice mushroom right there. And I'm just going to gently take all of this off. These are very delicate so you want to do this very gently. Just take it all off. And you can use a paring knife to just kind of scrape the rest of it up that's on the top there. Now you want to take the stem out of here too, but you also want to get all these gills out of here. So you can just take your knife and gently take these out as well, or just take the tip and go around and just gently scrape these off. If you do happen to break your portobello, that's okay. We're using an egg wash that we're going to use to cook these, and that helps. That'll help bind it together again if you do break them. But it, it'll just matter with the aesthetics of the plate. That's all. But you want to get. See, I'm breaking it there. But you just gently want to scrape all these out of here. This is a very delicate one. As best as you can. That's not a very good job there. But we'll just take away the loose pieces. It's not going to matter. Like I said, you're going to bread this and it's going to get a totally different look to it. And then you just want to pop this stem right out of there. So that's what you're getting. Not perfect. But like I said, we're going to bread this. And that's not going to matter when we get done breading it because it's going to have a total different look to it. This is what you're going to end up with. Not this bad. <laughs> but... There you go. And you want to take that top of that mushroom off too because it's kind of got a tough texture to it. And you don't want to be eating that. But that's what it'll look like. The gills are off. Nice and smooth on the top. Just set that aside. We'll get all three of them done and we'll come back. All right. Now we got our dredge station. We're going to have our flour in one. The first one, you want your flour. And we're just going to hit that with some salt and pepper. Stir it up really well. Then we've got our egg in the second one. Crack those right in there. Now you can salt and pepper this if you want as well. But basically you want to whip this really, really well to make it nice and smooth. There's not a lot of clumps of yolk and white in there. You want it to be a nice, nice liquid because you're going to be moving it along in the process here. Leave that in there. Then you got our panko breadcrumbs and your cheese. And we're going to mix that up too. So we've got all of the ingredients incorporated. Now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take our pretty little <laughs> mushroom caps that we had. And we're going to just carefully dredge into the flour to get it all covered. Then we're going to take and put it into the egg wash next. gently because it's fallen apart 
and then into our breadcrumbs that have the cheese in it and you can flip it over and put it in by hand too. Try to put your dredging materials into a larger vessel so there's room to work too. I didn't want to use a whole foil pan for what I had for a half a cup. But um, now this fell apart. I got a plate right there behind me. So like I said, if it does fall apart, not a big deal because you're gonna, you'll have just have more. But when it cooks, you'll see what we have. You won't have the aesthetics of having a whole mushroom cap, you know, but you will have the mushroom there. And we'll fix that when we do the plating, and I'll show you some secrets there, too. But I'm going to go ahead and finish these up and put them on the plate that I've got behind the camera there, and then we're going to start cooking these. All right. Well, there we go. We got our meats on plus all ready to go. We got the mushrooms that we just did right there. We got our shallots in the background there, our aromatics, our sour cream and olive oil, salt and pepper, and our marsala wine and chicken stock all ready to go. We even have our utensils that we'll need. I'm going to go ahead and set up on our pan and we'll start going from there. All right, so you want to get a medium high heat on this. We're going to put half our olive oil in. Get that oil all over the pan. Make sure it gets hot enough because we're going to set these mushroom caps right into that hot oil. I'll just go ahead and put a piece of it in there. When that starts sizzling and crackling, we'll know it's ready for the rest of them. All right, I'm hearing some noise, seeing some action in there. So I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of the mushroom caps into the oil. And you can use the mushroom cap to kind of spread it around a little bit the oil and try not to crowd them in the pan. You want to and you need to think you need to add a little bit more oil. Now oil will help with the color transfer because we want to get a lighter brown color on here. It helps absorb some of the flavor and it helps transfer heat as well. So you can see the bubbles there going around. That means it's heating up. We'll give about two to three minutes on each side, and we're going to flip them over and get the same thing on the other side. Go ahead and look. Yeah, there's a beautiful, beautiful color right there. So that's ready to flip over. They're all flipping over. Oh, I was going to show you a trick to that too with the broken mushrooms. You can do them at the same time with the egg. And the, and the flour when you're dredging it all, and you can actually use that dredge as a paste to put them back together and make them whole again like that one. I forgot to show you that, but we could take these two right here. You would have just dredged them together and made a paste. They would have stuck together while cooking, but we can still do that when we plate this up, which we'll show you in just a bit. Got some nice aroma coming off of here. I'm going to add a little bit more oil for this one because I don't have enough in there. There we go. These are ready to go on both sides. I'm going to turn that heat down just a little bit. And don't worry about all the uh, breadcrumbs that are in here. We're going to use those. There we go. We got the color there that we want. I'm going to take these off. We're going to add the rest of our oil. Get that all on there. We're going to take our shallots, throw them right in there. Stir these up and let them cook. These cook a little faster than onions. And then we throw our garlic right on in there. Stir that up. In our time. Oh my gosh, the fragrance coming off this pan is wonderful. Just wonderful. Then we're going to take your half cup of wine. I'll use this as a half cup because it is a half cup. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit to get a nice deglaze on this. You just want to 
hit that pan while it's hot. You want to deglaze these onions a little bit, make sure if there's anything sticking on the bottom of the pan, you get it mixed up in there. That's all part of your sauce. We're going to let that simmer down, and meanwhile I've got my half a cup of water right here. I'm going to go ahead and add the chicken base that you saw in the earlier picture. I'm going to just stir that up real nice with my other hand so you can see it. There you go. Now, you, determining the flavor at this, you can add more or less chicken base to get the more of the umami savoriness that we need for this. But a half a cup with about a teaspoon of that solid base should do good. Now, I'm going to turn this heat up just a little bit. We're going to stir this in a little bit here. Make sure it's all mixed up. All right, you see we got a boil going around the whole thing. I'm just going to turn it down to medium. Let this simmer about five minutes. Let it reduce. I hit it with a little salt and pepper. Stir that up. All right, the sauce is reduced. You want to just turn the heat off right now. Pull it off the heat, the burner that it was on. You want to let it just cool just a little bit because we're going to be adding our sour cream to it once it cools a little bit. But you want to have this room temperature, have it sitting out while you're doing all this. Kind of get it to where it's room temperature so it tempers in better into our hot sauce that we won't have clumps. We'll do that in just a minute. Well, the sauce has stopped bubbling. I took it off the heat. It's kind of calmed down just a little bit. I'm going to add our room temperature sour cream in here and using a whip, I'm just going to incorporate it right in to the sauce. Get all the lumps out. Okay, the lumps are out. I am going to just turn it on a little bit, get that hot again, and we'll plate this up. All right, so we're gonna take our mushrooms. I'm just gonna put them right on the plate. And like I said, we can rebuild these to make it look like they are a full mushroom cap. Right on the plate. If you're doing this at home, not a problem, but if you're paying $16.95 at a restaurant, there might be a little bit of an issue, but this is for you at home. Next, we're gonna take our sauce that we made. We're just gonna put it over each one. Plenty of this sauteed shallots over there on each one and then we'll get our sauce on everything. Now you can hit it with a little bit of parsley, a little bit of Parmesan cheese, make sure you wipe it down before you put it in the window for the server. If you want to play that game at home, that's fine. But there it is. We're going to move it over, take some photos of it, throw those photos into the timeline with some groovy music for you to enjoy. Then we're going to come back and we're going to taste this. So don't go away. See what it tastes like. Oh my god. <laughs> A lot going on here. You got the crunch from the panko and the way it was cooked. Hitting that mushroom, which is savory and earthy. Then you got that flavor of that sauce. It's wow, it's sweet, it's creamy. 
the onions on there make it really good. You can cut this with a fork if you want to. And I'm going to get a bite of everything here. Hmm. This is fantastic. This is very good flavor. Texture, the crunch, it's seasoned just right. You get a little bit of that cheese in there. You know, the salt and pepper make it really stand out. The flavor just bounces right out of this. This is really, really, really good. Do yourself a favor and make this recipe. I appreciate you watching. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time on It's Only Food with Chef John Pleat. Take care. Mm.